here's what you don't do. And we're going to look at it as my experience and time in doing open houses. Um, the most common mistakes that I see on? agents um, uh, doing when they are doing yeah, open houses. And if everybody can stuff. mute themselves, please. And then if you have a question, feel free to unmute no yourself. Reason. Uh, my, yeah, it's like Sarah's iPhone. Um, yeah, can, all right, perfect. Okay. All right. So everybody sees, everybody's good. I have a very limited window. Um, I can only see like four people at a time. So as I said, if you end up having a question, um, you can definitely, unmute yourself and ask or put it in the chat box and and one of my colleagues kit or maybe even bob are going to be able to help me out all right so welcome everyone we are here to talk about the top 10 open house mistakes mm -hmm. and i'm going to give you the action items that you need so that you know what you should be doing all right all right here we go and I, I have a lot of energy and I move fast. So like I said, if you have a question, just unmute yourself and ask or put it in the chat. And um, Kit will be glad to interrupt me and ask the question because I'm more than willing to help with that. All right. So just a little bit about me. My name is Mary Lou Dingman and I am uh, a licensed real estate agent and a coach. And I have been um, an agent since 2001. So I went from a radio career to real estate. So I was a DJ on rock radio, and then I went into real estate. And I still think that I am lucky enough that I have had the chance to experience two of the most awesome professions ever, all right? So when I was licensed in 2001, I worked in new home sales for national builders and as an on-site agent. And that's where I perfected a lot of what I do and implement in open houses now. So I've been licensed since 2001. I've been out on my own. I've been on teams. I was a buyer specialist on a very high producing team. Um, one of the biggest agents in my area and probably in the country um, until 2016. And I did a ton of open houses. And I have been a coach since 2017. So once again, Mary Lou Dingman, here's my contact information and my email address. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out. By the way, I have consolidated all of these top 10 mistakes as one document. And so at the end of the presentation, we'll make sure that you get that as well. All right. All right, cool. All right, so let's just jump right into it. Mistake number one is not actively lead generating for open houses. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is you just going on your office's internal page and saying, hey, everybody, if you don't have any of your own listings, I would love to host an open house for you. That is not enough. What you want to do is you want to get to the point where you are actually reaching out to the agents that have a lot of listings, you are developing relationships with them, and you want to become one of their go-to agents for open houses, okay? And some of the ways that you do that is you're going to select your open houses on Mondays or Tuesdays. Okay, and you want to select them a little earlier in the week because the, the likelier you are to do that, you're going to be able to do the activities that go along with doing a successful open house, right? Because an open a successful open house is not just showing up on Saturday or Sunday and slapping a sign in the yard. And we'll be talking about that as well. So I'm telling you, those partnerships with agents and they're going to tell you they're going to say, hey, you know what? I have an open house or I have a house hitting the market on Friday. Do you want to do the open house on Saturday? And you're going to be like, heck, yes, I do. And you really do want to reach out personally. So be more active with your lead generating for open houses. Don't just slap it up on your mm -hmm. office's page. You can go ahead and set yourself up on a search in MLS. What's your mail? John says his are missing. Um, can you please mute yourself? 
whoever was talking, I couldn't see who it was. Thank you. Um, and you can set up a search for yourself in MLS and you can search for coming soons. I don't know if you have that in that option in your MLS and new listings coming on, but that will help you attract okay. some of those. Oh, well, I was just muted, but now I'm not. Mistake number two is not incorporating virtual open houses. So I don't really know where you are and, and we're all in different parts of the country. And so what I imagine is that things are a little stricter in some places. Now I'm here in, in Raleigh, North Carolina, which is the capital, and we are doing in-person open houses. However, virtual open houses are a great supplement to in-person open houses or if you can't find any open houses, you know, if there's just too many people and too many agents you're competing with, then ask to do some virtually. And I'll, as we go along, I'll give you an idea of how uh, you work those in, all right? But if you are able to, I would do virtual open houses in tandem with your in-person open houses. If in-person open houses aren't possible, you can get almost as much traction and mileage on doing virtual open houses. And I'll explain that in a little bit, okay? And you wanna do the same activities for virtual and in-person open houses. Are there things that are different? Of course there are. Um, however, we're gonna point that out in just a little bit, but, but think outside the box on these. You are just trying to find the people that you're meant to help and you're building your business. And one of the great ways of doing that is um, by doing uh, virtual and or in-person open houses. If you have the opportunity to make a vacant home your office for the week, I would do that all day long, all right? Um, or if somebody in your office has new construction listings, you know, a few scattered lots in an established neighborhood. I did that when I was a buyer specialist. I, I was there Wednesday, Thursdays, and Fridays from 12 to five. And I, I had my little, um, what's it called? My little air card, you know, so I would have internet because I wanted to be able to use my phone and my computer. And I just set it up as my office because the longer you're there, you have more opportunities to, to catch people um, as, as they are driving through or coming into the neighborhood. All right. All right. And now we'll go on to mistake number three. And mistake number three is not stepping up your game. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, I've mentioned this a little bit already, and I'll get to that in the next slide. You have an opportunity to really get a lot of momentum and mileage out of one open house. And there are going to be times that you're going to get an open house on the fly, right? Where somebody got sick, it's Friday, somebody got sick or has a family emergency and they're like, hey, can I do this open house for you? Yes, but, but make sure that you're maximizing your opportunity as much as you can. So you definitely want to put a sign in the yard. You want to use directional signs. I recommend at least 12 directional signs. If you don't have your own signs, see if the listing agent has signs that you can borrow, okay? Just make sure that your contact information is available as well. Um, one of the cool things you can do instead of doing balloons, you can do pinwheels on open house signs. I tell you what, they attract a lot of attention in the spring and the summer. They're just so awesome with like the breeze blowing and you see the pinwheels and they will definitely attract attention. Make sure that you put directional signs up. I'm telling you, they make a big difference. People will find an open house based on directional signs. Make sure that you're putting the information on social media, that you're inviting your sphere of influence, that you're inviting former open house visitors. Um, it will make a difference. And I tell you, the, these activities, it's like, a, it's like a wheel that just continues turning. Now, the next point there, invite a minimum of 25 neighbors per open house, okay? So ideally, 
you're going to be able to door knock or call them. All right. And talk to as many of those as you can. Let's say, let's say best case scenario, all you get to do is, is put flyers in their door. Okay. So let's say you hit 25 neighbors. All right. You do four open houses a month, right? So that's a hundred people a month that are hearing about who you are as an agent who didn't know who you were before. Let's say you do that 10 out of 12 months. How many people, and somebody unmute themselves and answer, how many people now know who you are who didn't know who you were 10 months ago? What's 100 times 10? A thousand. A thousand. Boom. Thank you. Y'all, a thousand people just for doing this simple activity for every open house that you do. Betsy, how excited does that make you? So excited. Well, and you do, you do open houses. I know you do a lot of open houses and I know you, you kick butt at them as well. Oh, thank you. Um, y'all, I mean, what an opportunity. Now, is this something, Betsy, is this something that you regularly do? Do you typically door knock or try to do I, flyers? I say that I, that I do. Um, I don't always get the opportunity to. So having a great system in place is definitely something that I am working towards. So this is amazingly helpful. Okay, well, and, and in the next slide, I'm gonna show you because it is a system, all right? Um, so here you go. So what I did was I just laid out this calendar with the activities that you um, should and can do around each open house. So let's pretend that um, Saturday and Sunday open houses from four to seven. I know that looks like a weird time, but when I was selling in the summer, man, these were like my golden times to do open houses. Um, I got so much business because I was doing them an hour later than a lot of people. If they were doing four to six, I was doing four to seven. Or if there was a lot of new construction around, the sales centers were closing at six. Well, guess what? I was still open doing an open house. And that's where the directional signage comes in because they would you know, be leaving the new home neighborhood and say, oh, cool, honey, look, there's an open house. It's open till seven. Let's go swing in there. Y'all, I picked up more clients between six and seven on a Sunday. It was crazy. All right, so anyway, so we'll, uh, you're doing your open houses on Saturday and Sunday. So Sunday night, you go home, you're watching, you know, Outlander or Men in Kilts. That's my latest passion. Um, and you're um, you're writing your thank you notes to everybody that you met at the open house that weekend, and um, you're putting them in your database, right? So that's what you're doing on Saturday and Sunday. So Monday morning rolls around. You're putting those thank you notes in the in the mail, right? You're putting those in the mail. And then you're practicing your scripts. Now you see scripts practice along here five days a week. I can't tell y'all how important scripts are. What is the most common answer that you give if you are in a store and the salesperson comes up to you and says, hi, can I help you? What do you say? Just looking. Just looking. Absolutely. Right. And do you agree that there are uh, phrases that buyers will use at an open house? Well, I have scripts that I've created to get around those. That's actually in another course that I teach called How to Rock Your Open House. But I wanted to uh, give you this information as well. All right, so you're practicing your scripts, 30 minutes. Um, Monday morning, you are calling, preferably calling, Everybody that you met at the open house over the weekend, by the way, I'm going to talk to you about asking for the appointment at an open house, because that is your best chance of getting one. You're not going to get an appointment every time, though. There will be people that walk out the door. So you're going to call up these people. And remember, you've just put a thank you note in the mail to them as well. So they'll probably get that Tuesday or Wednesday. 
well, I don't know, with the USPS now, it might be a few weeks. All the more reason to stay in touch with them over the phone, right? So you uh, leave my voicemail message. Hey, it's Mary Lou Dingman with MLD Real Estate. We met at the open house uh, yesterday afternoon. I'm really glad I got a chance to talk to y'all. I'm looking forward to setting an appointment with you. Meanwhile, if there's anything you need, any questions, please let me know. And um, I'll be more than happy to answer them. And uh, let's definitely start thinking about a time that we can get together. That's it. That's all you have to do. If you leave a message, fine. If you text, fine. So I have put three slots on here where I'm going to put, because I'm asking for the appointment at these open houses, right? And so I put three slots on my calendar. So what is the benefit of going ahead and blocking your calendar for slots where you want to put people that you met at open houses? What could the benefit of that be? All right, gang, step on up. What would the benefit? You're able to have your time set in your calendar and say, Joe, can we, um, I have Tuesday open at 12 o'clock, Tuesday open at one o'clock. Perfect. Perfect. That worked well for you. And subliminally and subconsciously, what does it do for you when you see these calendar slots in green? By the way, green means money. What, what do you, when you see three open slots on your calendar, are you thinking, dang, who am I going to fill these slots with? Who's going to take these slots? Yes. Yeah. Crazy, huh? It's like a vision board. Put, put that intention out there. I'm telling you, if you put appointment slots on your calendar, you will be significantly more likely to fill them because that's what your, that's what your brain is looking at. All right. And if you, if you really want to challenge yourself, um, you know, print it out and stick it on your refrigerator. If you're married and you have kids and they're going to be like, mom, dad, man, what's up? Do you have any appointments in those slots yet? So have those slots on there. Now, I mentioned that, you know, by Monday or Tuesday, you're already, you're looking for your open houses. In reality, it might be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? Um, so at some point, once you have your open house nailed down for the weekend, you are going to go preview that open house and five other homes like it, okay? Now, it might be hard to find active homes. Um, you, maybe you, what would happen if you reached out to the listing agent on the ones that are under contract and said, hey, you know, congratulations, you got the house under contract. Could I just come by and preview the home? I know it's under contract, you know, but I'm doing an open house um, right around the corner and I would just love some perspective to share. Because I'll tell you, nothing is more embarrassing if people that walk into your open house know more about what's on the market and what's off the market than you do. It's not fun. If there's, if there's any new construction you can, can compare it to, you can do that, all right? Uh, in a perfect world, you know, but houses are going so fast now, so this one might be a little tricky. Do what you can know. If, if you can see five, go see five. If it's only two or one, that's fine. That still will give you a leg up. Maybe go look at something that's been on the market for a long time that hasn't sold yet. You'll probably figure out why. All right. Meanwhile, so you're doing this and then, you know, you're still continuing all of that. Getting the open house previewing is happening here. On Thursday morning, if you have access to a circle prospecting tool like Cole Realty, which is where you can call people in a neighborhood, you can pull up neighborhood phone numbers. You're going to do the same thing. Hey, it's Mary Lou Dingman with MLD Real Estate, and I'm doing an open house at 123 Main Street this weekend, and I would love to see you there. I'm doing a sneak peek for the neighbors between 3.30 and 4. I'd love to have you drop by, okay? So you're, you're knocking out some of those phone calls if you can. All right, now, Friday morning, you are calling anybody and everybody you've ever met in an open house that has not set an appointment with you yet. Suck it up and call them. 
they came into the open house for a reason. And, um, you know, at some point they're going to need help. Just call them. If you get their voicemail, fine. Just say, hey, it's MLD, MLD Real Estate. We met at the open house last week. Well, guess what? I'm doing another open house at 123 Park Avenue this weekend. I'd love to have you stop by. You have a reason to call them. You're not just calling to touch base. You're calling to invite them to another open house. Honestly, I'm not even concerned whether or not it meets their needs or not. You're just touching them, okay? And make sure that you are sending friend requests or likes to your business page to everybody that you meet at an open house. I mean, what, what the heck is the worst that can happen? They don't accept your invitation or your request. So what? Send it anyway. This is a numbers game, right? So let's say that um, you got your open house and you're going to put out your signs. So I would recommend in our area, uh, the sign police are pretty strict. And so I'm normally going to do it after business hours or on um, Saturday mornings. So go ahead, put your signs out. And, and door knock if you can. Even like I said, if you're just putting a flyer in their hand with your contact info on it, open house today. Do you agree that that also, what do you think sellers might think? If you're calling them up, then you're putting a flyer in the door. What might they think about you and your real estate business? You're hustling. Mm -hmm. No, Yeah, you're like hustling for business. And they're like, Wow. Because do they even know that it's not your listing? No, they don't know. And that's okay. I mean, it's, it's your firm's listing. So it's totally appropriate for you to do this. All right. So you put your signs out, you door knock and, you know, agents are always like, I don't have time to eat. I'm going hungry. Well, look, I even wrote in time here for you to have lunch. So go have some lunch before your open house. Right. And then you promise the neighbors a neighborhood sneak peek um, 30 minutes before the open house. The benefit to doing that is that sometimes neighbors like to talk a lot or, you know, they may say, well, you know, the HOA dues, they're talking about, you know, increasing them. And you, you want to give them time that you can just get to know them while also saving time for the people that are actually at the open house. All right. Um, and, you see that I, I do, I, I have three hour open houses on here. The reason I did that is because with all these, you know, extra activities that you do, I have just always found that, you know, that last hour, I'm just getting revved up. So I was like, I'm just going to do three hours. So that's why it looks the way it does. You don't have to do it this way. You don't have to do a three hour open house. Um, but, you know, if you're doing all this stuff around it, why not, why not just use that opportunity? All right. Are there any questions thus far? Feel free to unmute yourself and ask any questions that you may need to ask. And I'll give you a little bit of time towards the end as well. MLD, are you going to get into any of the conversation? Like when people first come into the door and stuff? Uh, a little bit. Okay. Yes, a little bit. And I am actually building um, an open house course for the Locker Room University. And you know what, Kit? I mean, I can do my open house class at some point on here. Uh, I can do how to rock your open house. That's where I really get into that stuff. So, all right. Anybody else? Any questions? MLD, what, if you don't have access to Circle Prospecting, what do you recommend to do instead? Well, that's why I was saying I would do the door knocking. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, you know, friend them on social media in the very least, put a flyer in their door. You know, if you do 25 people and you actually get to have a conversation with five of them where you're actually, and, and look, if you're, you know, their addresses. So, I mean, you could just add them to your database uh, for mailers and things like that. But, you know, if you get their email address, let's say, you get five people. So five times four is 20. Let's say you do that 10 months, that's 200 people. And uh, 200 people in your database should yield you 10 sales. 
Yes, ma'am. Numbers don't lie. So, all right, here we go. All right, here is the um, fourth mistake, not asking for the appointment at the open house. And this is kid, this is kind of what you alluded to a little bit. So I start on the front porch. I realize that I'm in the South and many of you are like in Minnesota and all these places right now that's physically not possible for you to do because it's cold as Hades. So if the, typically there is a room on the front of the house that maybe is like the office of the formal dining room, we're just very, we're very friendly in the South. And so I always like to start my open houses on the front porch because that's when I start building rapport with people when they're getting out of their car. I'm like, hey, um, you picked a great day to come to an open house. How did you find out about this? Oh, the signs. Oh, great. Um, how many open houses are you seeing today? Uh, you know, this is going to be our only one. Great. What made you decide to stop at this one? All right. And so by now they're up on the porch. So just build that rapport with people. Like who, who loves going to visit a friend or somebody and, and you see them like sitting on the front porch waiting for you in a very, I mean, it's a great warm, fuzzy, homey feeling, right? All right. So you're asking questions. Did you notice how I asked questions? They weren't yes, no questions. They were, tell me this. How about that? How many open houses? Not, are you going to go see more open houses today? No. Okay, great. So how many? This is our only one. Great. What made you decide to stop by this one as opposed to any others? So when, when you bring, I'll go ahead and tell y'all my script. Um, when they come in the house, everybody's taking off their shoes. And this is my script. I wrote, I wrote most of the scripts that I use. So they come in the house and I say, well, thanks for stopping by the open house. My name is Mary Lou Dingman with MLD Real Estate. This is not my listing. This actually, this listing is a colleagues of mine in the firm. Um, and I am holding this open house on her behalf. However, I find that I meet a lot of my clients that I'm meant to help at open houses. So it's possible that we are meant to meet today. I'm not gonna hold you now. I'm not gonna hover. I'm gonna go let you tour the home. We're gonna meet back in the kitchen. I wanna hear your feedback on this home and what your thoughts are. And then maybe we can discuss a time to get together to see if we're a good fit to work together. So all I did was I just planted a seed, right? I, it, I'm telling you, it's gonna be a lot easier to ask for the appointment once they come back to the kitchen because I've, I've told them that that's what I'm gonna do. And the majority of the people lead with their S personality type. That's a personality type. S's like to be told what happens next. They like the plan to be laid out for them, okay? And I say, you know what? I'm gonna let you ooh and ah. I've never hovered at open houses. This is not a script. This is me just saying this. I don't hover at open houses. I want to let people go look on their own. So I say, you know, I'm going to go let you ooh and ah. Let's meet back in the kitchen. I would really love to hear your feedback on this home. And then let's see if we can set up a time to meet to see if I'm a good fit to help you. That's it. Um, does everybody, did everybody get that or do I need to repeat it again? Everybody got it? I think we got it. Okay, good. All right, perfect. And, and you know, you're going to ask powerful questions. Um, you know, um, if somebody says, oh, I'm not ready for a year. Ah, oh, tell what's going to be different in a year? You know, don't just say, oh, okay, well, yeah, put your name and your email address down here and I'll, I'll touch base with you. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, good luck <laughs> with your search. So, cause I tell y'all people that if you ask for appointments at the open house, you will be shocked at how many people say yes. I promise you. Okay. Um, I see somebody popped up something in the chat box. Is that a question or a comment? I don't see anything in the chat box. That was just earlier. Uh, okay. Betsy asking, 
Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Here we go. Yes, Kate just came through. Sorry. Do you ask if they're already working with a realtor? They're generally going to let you know. Um, and they will, I mean, they'll typically let you know um, if when they're walking in the door, if you say, well, how did you find out about it? And if they say online, and then I say, oh, great, what site? If they say Zillow, what does that probably mean? Yeah, they're just out shopping on their own. And yeah, they don't have an agent, right? Now, if they say, oh, well, our agent, you know, she couldn't come with us today. Oh, okay, great. I'm glad. Sounds like you guys are in gray hands. I mean, there are other ways to, you know, ask. You know, you don't have to come out and say, you know, uh, do you have an agent? But, you know, if somebody says, yeah, we're seeing three open houses today, you can always say, awesome. Well, who else is helping you in your search? You know, nobody. Okay, great. Typically, when you, when they're taking off their shoes and you're telling them, you know, I find the clients I'm meant to help and all that stuff. You know, if you say, well, let's, you know, come meet me in the kitchen. I want to hear your feedback on this home. And let's talk about um, setting up an appointment to see if I'm a good fit to help you. At that point, typically, if they have an agent, they'll tell you. I am not going to step on anybody's toes. I am, I respect relationships. But I'm telling y'all, people will tell you they have an agent and they don't. It's the just looking. So... And Betsy's I've, saying in the chat, my two cents, ask if they've signed with an agent. Well, I, and Betsy's that is, saying. I, I do go in deeper on the scripts with that. Yes. And you, of course, I am not going to go into any conversation with someone that is comfortable. Let me, I'm going to share an example with y'all. I did an open house. This was years ago. And this young couple came in. And they, uh, they really liked the house. And they said, well, yeah, we're, we're going out with our agent tomorrow to see some homes. And I said, okay. And then they were like, well, he's just kind of showing us some homes. And then they said, how much should we tell you about our opinion on this house? I said, well, I wouldn't tell me much unless I'm working for you. And that's the way I left it. They left the open house about 10 minutes later, they came back and they said, you know what? We really like you. And truth be told, you know, the agent, he's just showing us houses. Um, and we really think we want to work with you because you've given us more information in the 20 minutes we've been at this open house than we've gotten from him. And I said, Okay. And they said, but you know, we, we were supposed to go out with them tomorrow. And I said, do you want me to reach out to him? And they said, that would be so awesome. So I called them and I said, Hey, this is Mary Lou Dingman. I was doing an open house today and some of your customers, cause they weren't his clients. They were customers. I said, some of your customers came in, here's who they are. And we just developed a rapport and they have decided that they would like for me to represent them and they are ready to sign a buyer's agreement with me. And um, I just wanted to let you know that they were going to show, you were going to show them homes tomorrow. You now have your Saturday morning back and you don't have to worry about it. I mean, it was, I was polite. I was professional. He was very grateful. Um, it took the pressure off the clients. Okay. But I am not... I am not about stepping on other relationships with agents. So don't get so wrapped up. You're looking for the people that you are meant to help. Right? Yep. MLD, that's exactly what I was getting at is sometimes they're just, they don't have an agent or they're, they're like, oh, I've seen a house. And they mean, that means they went to an open house with a, you know, hosted by a different agent. Mm -hmm. And so if you just dig a little deeper and say, oh, great. Who, are you, have you signed an agreement with somebody? And they're like, oh, well, no. Then you dig deeper. If, if they're talking about somebody's name and they obviously have a relationship, then yeah. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, you know, or if they start you know, or if they, you know, if they say, oh, well, yeah, I, you know, we, we met an agent 
we met an agent. Yeah, she showed us a property yesterday. Then I say, oh, great. So did the agent do a, a full needs analysis with you and walk you through the purchase process? Uh, what is that? And I'm like, well, that's the difference. That's what I do. And of course I will ask them now, I'm not going to step on any written agreement because that's not my style and that's not my ethics. So anyway, I don't want to go down too much of a bunny trail with that, but does that help clear up those clouds a little bit, everybody? Okay. All right. Good. All right. All right. So mistake number five. Oh, I talked about scripts practice, didn't I? I mean, look at these, look at these here. How, how likely is it when you do an open house that you're going to get these objections? How likely? Very likely. Yes. Very likely. Yeah. Very. Okay. All right. Betsy, role play with me for a minute. Okay. All right. So, um, so um, Betsy, I would love to sit down with you and, um, and talk about, I wanna hear more about what you're looking for uh, to see if I'm a good fit to help you. Oh, you know, I just, I just stopped by. I don't even know what I'm looking for yet, really. I, mm. Okay, all right. Well, what made you get in your car and come look at this open house? Well, I've always just been kind of curious about the neighborhood and I wanted to see the inside. So in a perfect world, when would you see yourself moving? Um, I mean, I guess I just have to see if I can afford it. I mean, I, we're renting right now and I'm always kind of on the lookout for things that I like. Sure, sure. When is your lease up? Do you mind me asking? Sure, It's uh, we have a month to month. Oh, wow, okay. Well, look, I find that I often come across people that I meant to help in their home search process. Here's what I propose. Why don't we sit down, have a conversation. I wanna hear more about your needs. I wanna put the tools in your hands that are gonna help you make an informed decision. And if we decide we're a good fit to work together, we move forward. I will tell you though, it's your timeline. So whatever your timeline is, is what my timeline would become should we work together. So what about if we meet uh, tomorrow night at five or Tuesday at two, which one works better? Uh, tomorrow after work would be great. So even if I'm not like just ready to go buy a house, you, you still should get together. Yeah. yeah, because what we wanna do is think about when you go on vacation, you know, if you go, well, now during COVID it's a little more wonky. Back in the olden days, if you were going on vacation a year from now, what would you be doing? You'd be pulling up hotel rooms. You'd be checking flights. This is the one of the biggest purchases, if not the biggest purchase you're ever going to make in your life. So let's get those facts together now so that when you are ready, we've already got those, those pieces in place. Well, that sounds wonderful. Okay. I wrote that script, by the way. Um, <gasps> Y'all, that's a script. I can do that off the top of my head. And when you practice scripts, you internalize them. And what happens is you're not concerned about what you're going to say. I was listening 100% to what Betsy was telling me. I was more of an active listener. That's how important scripts are. So I have, I, and I mean, I rolled a few in there. All right. You can, you can, role play, you can record yourself doing scripts, you could practice affirmations. I find clients I'm meant to help at open houses. I am powerful in person. I am powerful at virtual open houses. I come from contribution. Affirmations are not cheesy, y'all. They are everything. All right, cool. I see some stuff in the chat box, but if somebody wants to tell me what's in there. It was, me. I like that. Boom. Well done. Thank <laughs> you. Um, yes. So they're, okay. they're, they're enjoying your scripts. Okay. All right. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Um, not arriving at least 30 minutes early. I'm telling you, especially in this market, the last thing you want is to be rolling up and there's five people at the door. 
Because that, first of all, the sellers are not going to be too happy about that. Neither is the listing agent if you're not the listing agent. Always make sure you're at least 30 minutes early. If you're doing a sneak peek for the neighbors 30 minutes before the open house, well, then I would show up 45 minutes early so you can get everything ready for the neighbors, right? This is part of your open house prep. These are the things that you that you need to do for open houses. Make sure that you have sign-in sheets or if you're using a sign-in app. I don't leave any paperwork laying around. I put it all in an open house notebook because I, I want to build rapport with people. How many of y'all have walked into an open house sales center? It's just about everybody. Do they just leave packets laying around for you? They don't here in North Carolina. That mess is expensive. No, they're going to engage you in conversation or they're going to take you over to their pretty lit up map. They're going to give you some information. Um, and, and so you will give people information. You want to build rapport with them though, along the way. All right. So you, I don't, I don't leave any flyers or anything laying around. They will get a flyer after I've engaged them in conversation. Uh, now I'm not a control freak about that kit. This sounds like what we were talking about this morning. I had somebody walk into an open house one time that I was doing, and he's like, you got a flyer? And I'm like, as a matter of fact, I do. Let me introduce your, myself. My name is Mary Lou. How'd you find this open house? And he was like, just give me the damn flyer. And I said, yes, sir. You know what? He was not my people. Nope. I was not meant to work with him. I'm not, I'm not going to get into a power struggle with somebody, but I'm telling you, if you tell most people the way things are going to unfold, they'll, they'll follow along. They'll do it. It's just human nature. Okay. You know, make sure you've got lights on music playing all that good stuff, whatever you want to do. Uh, I don't bake cookies. I don't do any of that. I take a cooler of water and I put it on the front porch. I literally sit on the front porch if I can, weather permitting. Like I said, you Minnesota people, I know that's hard. So, all right. And, and I kind of, I talked about this on the calendar, not previewing similar homes. Preview at least five listings, if you can, in the neighborhood or nearby competition. Oh, this picture was from an open house that I did years ago. And I have my little green chair, my camping chair on the front porch. I don't know if you can see it in that picture. Um, and my little cooler of water right next to it. And that was, a, that was a beautiful house too, it was fun. All right, mistake number eight, not following up with open house visitors. Now we, I kind of went through that on the calendar, right? So lead generation will make you money. Lead follow-up will make you wealthy. So follow-up is everything. And, and I've set it up for you on that calendar. Just, <clears throat> just do what's on the calendar. Set your visitors up on uh, like drip campaigns. And trust me, if you're calling them once a week, they're either going to tell you to get lost or if they happen to say to you, you know what? Yeah, call me, you know, you don't need to call me every week. Uh, you know, call me at, call me at the beginning of July. You know what? I'm probably going to start calling them in May. Because what'll happen is all of a sudden you'll reach out to them and they'll say, oh yeah, we bought a house. Yeah. You know, and it's three months earlier than they told you it was going to be. Once people start on this path, and so when I was talking with Betsy, that was the first question I asked her. I said, so what made you, she's telling me, ah, it's going to be a while. And I'm like, well, and then, and then I find out she's month to month, right? Yes, you sneaky thing, you. <laughs> um, and by the way, none of this was planned. We just, I, I didn't know Betsy was going to be on here and we just started role playing. Now. I do not set up anybody on searches if they have not met for an in-person consultation, okay? Because if somebody says, we, well, yeah, I want a house just like this, you know, we know that it's about a lot more than a house just like this or three bedrooms and two baths. And, and 
you need to know how long they're going to be in the house, how much money they have set aside, you know, what their top three things are, what their expectations are with an, of an agent. And it's hard to set up people on searches. Do you know that probably people that go to open houses, they probably are on like five different searches from flipping agents. They met in an open house who were too afraid to ask them for an appointment. All right, I, I wanted to bring the calendar back in again, just so y'all could see it, because you know, hopefully now you understand even more that this is a wheel. This is a system that keeps chugging along. If, and, and by the way, I've added all this up and I think it's um, like, uh, I think this is 21, maybe 21 hours per week. Okay, I might be off for a little bit. All right. So 21 hours per week in our market. Well, you know what? Remind me, we'll do that after we're finished here. Um, remind me, we'll do the exercise. Okay. Um, not inviting neighbors to the open house. Do you understand the importance now of inviting the neighbors, sellers? I mean, y'all talk about an opportunity for them to see how you hustle for listings that aren't even yours. But like I said, they don't even know that. They don't, they don't know. They don't know who has it listed. Um, you know, but the fact that you're showing up and you're with the firm and you're doing the open house and you're inviting them, pretty awesome stuff. All right. Um, and mistake number 10 is not seeing open houses as a way to attract sellers. We, I, we've been talking about that a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah make those weekly contacts. What a great way to build your database. The sweet thing about open houses is they're good for now business and future business. And they're, you know, they're kind of in that sweet spot right in the middle because you will have people walk into an open house that need to buy or sell in the next 60 days. It'll happen, I promise you. And then you're going to have people that you're going to nurture and that you're going to stay in touch with and that you're, you're going to reach out to. You're going to put in your database. You're going to door knock. You're going to ask them to like your business pages, right? All right. So let's do, I want to do this exercise really quickly. Um, can somebody pull out a calculator. Let, let's do this first. Let's come up with an average commission, average gross commission income. Let's just come up with a number that's kind of good for everybody. Is is like, is that five that you're putting up, Betsy? Okay, 5,000. That's cool. Our area is about seven, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, that's what you get when you live in one of the best places in the country. So what can I say? Um, so, all right, so $5,000. All right, so let's say, I'm gonna throw some numbers out again. Let's say that you, let's say you follow this calendar and let's say you do, how many open houses do we wanna say you do a month? Four? Sure. One open house a weekend. All right, so that's yep. four open houses. And let's say you do this 10 months out of 12, all right? Well, I'm gonna give you, you know, two months to slack off or holidays or it's too hot, too cold or whatever. So that's 40 open houses, right? Yep. 40 open houses. Thank you, Betsy. All right, let's say you get an appointment at what percentage of those? From those let's 40 open houses. Did you say 50? Yeah, let's say 50%. All right, so that's 20, 20 people that agree to work with you. <laughs> How many of those people do we want to say you get under contract, either on the buy or the sell? 80%? 80 that's what huh? Betsy and I are the same ones. <laughs> you said 80? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, so, so 20 times 80%, that's 16. All right, Betsy, take 16 times 5,000. And what's that number? A lot of money. 
$80,000. So if somebody said, hey, you can work 21 hours a week and make $80,000, who wants that job? <laughs> yeah, seriously. I'll take it. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to uh, stop sharing now. I want to see. Yeah, who wants that job? Everybody. Either give a thumbs up or, or uh, show us your face. You got lots of thumbs up there. Heck yeah, y'all. Mm -hmm. I mean, crazy. That's how awesome open houses are. You can, and, and imagine, that's one of two or three things that you're doing to build your business. You, you can also invite your friends in your sphere to open houses. I've had so many of my friends stop by to see me. I mean, that's a touch. That's a that's a face to face. You know, if it's in their neighborhood, what a great way to reconnect with people that, you know. So, all right. I would love for every I, I need five ahas for you or things that you are going to do differently after hearing this information. I need to hear from five different people. David Lynch, you were digging what I was doing, so I want to hear from you. <laughs> uh, Mary Lou, first of all, thank you for this uh, call and sharing uh, some knowledge. Uh, for me, it's really uh, taking open houses seriously, right? Uh, not just going and you know setting the appointment to open it and being there and available, but actually being proactively selling and proactively doing something and expecting an outcome from it. Um, that's something that I will take very, very seriously moving forward. And I mean, I can tell by your energy and I could tell not even you, you, you can totally do open houses. <laughs> Y'all, if you just go find your people, that's all you're doing. You're doing your part to find your people. Right. I yeah. add, right? I'm sorry. Just add into that. I like that. The, the, the finding your people being you're like, I'm meant to work with you. That was another thing that really stuck with me too. Good. Cause it's true. It's like matchmaking, you know, it's, it's very romantic. It's like house romance, you know? Hey, Beth, can you take the chat? I've got a barking dog. <laughs> Mary Lou, I have a question for you on the virtual open houses. Yeah. Um, so give us a, just give us a little something on that. I called an agent the other day. She had an $800,000 listing. I wanted to hold an open house too. It was a coming soon. She said, I already have 42 showings. She said, there's no point in doing an open house. And honestly, we could have done an open house. We could have done a virtual open house. So give me a little feedback on that, please. Thank you so oh, much. And that's, and that's good. I'm glad you brought that up. So did you tell her you wanted to do virtual or are you thinking that that might be what you keep in your back pocket? I'll keep that in my back pocket because I didn't think about it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not a coach, I should know better. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, exposure is exposure. And I mean, even though if she she's like, I've got X number of, you know, of, of showings, I mean, who cares? Why not double it? Or just say to her, well, how about I bring you, um, I bring you virtual showings and then, you know, those people may come in with agents, you know, I mean, like, and it's really no no skin off of her nose or the sellers. Let me tell you what one of the agents um, is doing that I coach. So right before Christmas, and I love I love coaching her because I just throw any challenge to her and she does it. And she will uh, she'll fuss about it along the way, but she's always glad in in the aftermath. And so right before Christmas, you know, because she was like, I can't get any open houses, and I said well, why not try do some virtuals? And she's like, all right. And so she did four virtual open houses. She had a thousand views on those four virtual open houses. And now what she's doing is she's doing a series, fall in love with dot, dot, dot town. And she's doing, we're in, I'm in Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill. And she, so she did a series on fall in love with the bull city. So she did like three or four virtual open houses. And she's also gone. It's like a little show she's doing. 
and and she went by some restaurants or went by some parks and things like that. So what a way to develop a community feel there as well. MLD, do you have a resource or a link or just a, 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 cause I know you could do a whole nother class on the best way to do virtual. So is there a specific resource? I do have, I, I have a resource. Um, I will ask, um, I can send it to um, Locker Room HQ and ask them to send it out to everybody okay. who was um, on here. And just to let you know, there are some comments here. Um, Abby says, I'm definitely going to look into scripts and or look into do the, I can read, I promise. I'm definitely going to look into scripts and practicing scripts. Kate says, I'm going to make open houses a high priority and practicing scripts. I love doing open houses. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> and, and I will tell you this, one of my passions is that I want to work side by side and coach agents who want to build the open side, the open side, the open house side of their business. So if you want more information on that, uh, you can uh, message me, email me, and I will make sure that I get that information. If you're already working with a coach, I respect that. Once again, here I am with my real estate convo. I am here to help who I am meant to help. So it's no different in these conversations than it was when I was doing open houses. So would love to have a conversation with you and we could just see what that looks like. So, all right. Awesome. So any other questions? Imelda, you said you were going to email us something. Uh, was it the... Yeah, I'll, I'll add that to what, um, yeah, and look, hello, squirrel, I already forgot what I said. <laughs> I think it was just the um, uh, PowerPoint, maybe, or something of the- uh, Virtual Open House and a summary of this PowerPoint. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so I'll, get, I'll send you some virtual Open House info, um, and then um, I will also- uh, sends you the the top 10 mistakes. It's just a list of them. Perfect. That's the bullet points, but that'll help remind you. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. 